Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War, and we are playing in our campaign as the Allied Powers. It is November of 1940 of our game, France has recently fallen, the Vichy government has been set up, uh, and Romania and Bulgaria have both joined the Axis Powers, uh, aligned against us. Uh, meanwhile, the Italians have invaded Greece from Albania, and we're holding them just barely at the moment uh, in the mountains here uh, along the Albanian border, and we're in the process of shifting our forces away from the fortifications bordering Bulgaria, which we would easily be outflanked by the Italians at Albania, and we are moving south down the Greek peninsula in an effort to form a better defensive line near Larissa, uh, where we can have a narrower front and hopefully resist the Germans and the Italians there. Meanwhile, the Italian front in North Africa uh, is going reasonably well. We've had Tobruk uh, under siege for quite some time. The defenders there have no supply. Their morale is almost all the way down. But they do continue to uh, resupply themselves uh, somewhat uh, occasionally. And um, that has caused some problems uh, for our ability to reduce the fort uh, and the, the city. Nonetheless, I just bombarded the port there with our battleship, so it should provide no supply next turn. And we'll see if we can actually, uh, you know, finish off the Italians at Tobruk, which will probably trigger the arrival of the Africa Corps, although we did just have the 7th British Armored Division arrive. Uh, so if we have a little bit of time to reinforce these guys up to full strength, we might actually have a chance. Meanwhile, we haven't eliminated the Italians in East Africa just quite yet. Addis Abba, the capital, is surrounded. Similar to Tobruk, they keep reinforcing and keeping their troops moderately uh, alive, but um, that should fall before too long. And the Chinese front has kind of turned into a quagmire with the Japanese on multiple occasions nearly breaking through, uh, but also uh, the Chinese forces launching some pretty effective counterattacks from time to time uh, that are doing some damage to the Japanese troops there as well. We've also been trying to build a new line of fortifications um, here along just a little bit to the rear, a much longer line of fortifications that we'd like our troops to be able to fall back into so that they can either be in city hexes or in fortification hexes, uh, and that will make the Japanese d job a lot more difficult without surrendering too much ground. That's the situation in November of 1940. The Soviets are preparing for the, ja the German assault. They have built a defensive line that runs nearly all the way to Riga, and we will be building fortifications linking Riga to the fortification at, what is this, uh, Dogpils? I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, but we will need a few more units to fill that out, and it's an incredibly thin line. Uh, some people have suggested grouping my units in more of a homogeneous group, uh, of five or six units in one area and then sort of not having a static front. Uh, but we'll see if that's something that ends up being a wiser move or not. I'm not quite sure. Meanwhile, the British troops in England are somewhat um, limited. We have just one uh, infantry corps, the second corps. We have a special forces corps. And then we have some garrison units uh, operating in England. Uh, but we don't actually have a ton of troops there. We do have naval vessels here, which will hopefully prevent the Germans from launching an assault. And it is late 1940, so I don't know what the trigger would be for an actual invasion of England. That being said, we do have three fighter units, two tactical bomber units, and a strategic bomber unit. So the Air Force there is in pretty good shape. And frankly, the Navy is in reasonably good shape as well, uh, with multiple battleships here within easy striking distance of the channel should the Germans decide to start loading troops up on troop transports. Uh, we've done a little bit of re reconnaissance here with the uh, FNLF uh, uh, Le Trump, the Free French Navy, uh, toward Brest. And so far, we've seen no indication uh, that the Germans are about to uh, land troops anywhere uh, outside of uh, France. So that being said, we've already done our turn. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what the Germans have in store for us here as we move toward December of 1940. Former British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain dies. Parisians clash with police during Armistice Day commemorations. The United Kingdom develops production technology level 1. The USA develops advanced fighters level 1. China develops advanced fighters level 1. Scientists uh, report progress in artillery weapons. And there you go. British income is going up a little bit, uh, which is useful given the fact that the French income completely evaporated. We also signed up for a Lend-Lease for the Americans, so we're spending a small amount of money and transferring some naval assets to the British, which should make uh, the Royal Navy uh, a bigger threat to the Germans. 
German heavy cruiser moving forward here to engage our destroyer off the coast of Bremen. Their sub tried to finish it off and failed. Their battleship did move in and finish off our destroyer here off the North German coast. We were mainly trying to keep an eye on the uh, German invasion preparations, but it did leave that destroyer exposed to being destroyed. Haha, -ha, the destroyer was destroyed. Uh, Greek cruisers being hit by Italian subs here off the coast of Crete. I'd rather they attack Greek naval ships than my own. We know that we probably won't hold out super long, or Greece won't hold out super long. They're advancing down the western coast of Greece. Holy shit, did they... Oh, no. Man, I almost had a heart attack there. I just thought that German armored unit moving toward Brest-Litovsk was actually invading the USSR. And I thought, I am not prepared for this. On the flip side, why would Germany launch a winter invasion? That would be pretty stupid. I'm guessing we're going to get the invasion of Yugoslavia here pretty soon. I would imagine there will be the historical coup against the fascists in Yugoslavia, leading them to join the Allies, leading the Germans to be diverted uh, in their effort to destroy um, the threat to the rear. Meanwhile, the Italian troops in Addis Ababa are cut off, and so apparently they're attritioned out of existence. So that's good. So that city should fall next turn. Destroyers for bases agreement gives us the destroyer Castellan which is being commissioned here in Liverpool, which is useful because we just had a destroyer destroyed off the coast of Germany. Malta is hindering Axis supplies in uh, the Middle East, which is good. And there you have it. So the Bulldog destroyer was lost. The Abyssinia Corps for the Italians is lost. And the other events. The Formidable, the Royal Navy's uh, aircraft carrier Formidable is arriving. So we can deploy her as well. The Soviet Union gets a destroyer, which we can deploy. I don't know why we'd ever deploy anything in the um, Baltic. I really wish I could get those ships out of the Baltic. I would imagine they could redeploy. I mean, it's not... The strait wouldn't be closed, I don't think, to the, to the Russians until the war actually begins. But I digress. Okay. We'll do some recon here with our cruisers off the coast of Brest. No sign of landing forces. Same off La Havre with our cruisers moving out of Southampton. Amsterdam detected nothing. Nothing off the coast of Bremen either. So, so far it looks like the Germans are not planning for a winter invasion of England. Which is good for us. Our fleet in England is more or less all at full strength. We do have the one light cruiser here, the Southampton, which does need to be repaired. We'll move her into the Port of London, and then we'll go ahead and repair her. Meanwhile, we've got the new destroyer here, or actually we've got the destroyer Jersey off the coast of Rosyth, which is repairing. And then our new destroyers in Liverpool will also go ahead and repair to full strength. Oh, we've also got a destroyer at Scapa Flow, which can't repair there, so we'll move it to Cromarty, and then we'll repair it next turn. So that's the home island situation. Meanwhile, we've got two British uh, transports that are on their way, uh, one South African, one British, to the uh, North African theater. Assuming we can actually clear a route for them, a safe route of passage. Looks like we can speed them toward Alexandria, so we will do that, and we'll put them ashore there. Meanwhile, the South African troops, actually, I probably should have put them ashore in um, Greece. Greece could use the help. Maybe I'll have to mount them back up next turn. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and bombard Tobruk, destroy the fortification that the garrison there now has. Our aircraft are grounded, unfortunately, by the looks of it. They have no supply. Can our armor get there? They can. So we'll move our recon unit over here. We'll attack with our infantry toward Tobruk. Nice. We didn't even need the army. The infantry took Tobruk by themselves. All right, so we're going to move this armor forward here. Move the headquarters unit into Tobruk. Start repairing the port immediately. Move the special forces units across the desert. And we should be ready for the, the German counterattack. The inevitable German counterattack must be coming. So it's a good thing that we're 
moving these uh, reinforcements in. Um, so we'll have two additional corps of infantry to help versus the Africa Corps, which will be arriving soon. All right. Meanwhile, the Greeks are falling back toward Larissa. So we're following that core back. Pull this army back toward Athens. Athens itself is open, so we'll move the uh, cruisers back into the port there to dissuade the Germans from an amphibious landing, if they even have the capability to do that. And we're withdrawing toward Athens itself. Athens proper. Um... Meanwhile, I think we should, I mean, do we want to reinforce? I think the question is, do we want to reinforce the Mediterranean fleet, which is massively in need of reinforcements because it suffered heavy losses in the battle for the Mediterranean. And it's kind of like, yeah, I need to reinforce these guys, but it's so expensive. It's going to kill my ability to do anything else with my money this turn. In any event, I need the... Uh, Need the strength, so I guess we will. To face the Italian fleet. Which we have damaged somewhat, but not decisively. Okay. Recon vehicles will drive forward toward Benghazi. Doesn't look like we see anything in Benghazi. I think Tobruk is what triggers the arrival of the Africa Corps. I think they arrive in Tripoli. They could arrive in Benghazi, I'm not sure. Interior craft to move to Cairo. Meanwhile, if we move south, East Africa. You can have this garrison unit here take the capital at uh, uh, Addis Ababa. We'll attack this army headquarters unit with our own troops. Damn. Couldn't quite finish it off. Move these guys into the Ethiopian capital. And then hopefully we can destroy this Italian core here next turn and then move toward Mogadishu and evict the uh, Italians out of um, East Africa all, all at once. Meanwhile, I'd like to reinforce these guys to full strength. It doesn't look like I can do that. So we're going to slowly reinforce the core of South African troops in South Africa, and then we're going to get them on boats as well, headed somewhere. So I think that does it for England and for North Africa. We do have Canadian stuff here. We'll move these coastal bombers to England, actually. The Royal Canadian Coastal Bombers. They'd probably be useful against German subs, but... And we're also going to move these guys on transports. They can't quite get all the way there. Hopefully the Germans don't spot a lone transport of Italian or of, uh, Canadian troops on the way to England. We'll, uh, I think we'll move our this destroyer over here nearby to help this Canadian Navy destroyer. Americans are still hanging out. Reinforce those guys to full strength. Just get everybody up to full strength. The few units that exist anyway. Alright, so they're done. The British still have a little bit of money left, but not a ton. I think that about does it. I reinforce the units I can. Actually, can the uh, Air Force reinforce? No, they can't. So move our Air Force forward as well toward Tobruk. Okay, so we're advancing into Libya. We've taken the capital of uh, Ethiopia, and that's the British situation. I guess the one thing we can spend our money on potentially is or not. I'd like to upgrade some of these British troops, but it doesn't look like I can. 
I can upgrade them. I just can't get them. All right, so we can spend the money upgrading the troops on the Malay Peninsula. So when the Japanese do eventually attack, we're better prepared. Meanwhile, to China. Huzzah! We destroyed the Japanese court, Canton. All right. Good result there. We couldn't take the city itself, but its supply is already zero. Probably due to all the fighting. Okay. Meanwhile, continuing the assault on the Japanese near Pakoi. Upgrade this core here to infantry weapons level one. We want to get all of our Chinese units upgraded to infantry level weapon level one weapons if we can. That's actually probably more important than reinforcements in mo in most cases, unless it's a situation like this where the unit's down to three. Uh. All right, so we just move these guys, and we're going to reinforce them to full strength. Right, we're going to pull this army headquarter unit back. We're going to pull... I think we're going to pull this guy back. I hate the idea of leaving this guy here. I don't want to spend all my money on these two units reinforcements, though. I can't pull far enough back, though. Doesn't look like anybody else is in deathly trouble. Okay. Let's pull him back out of the front line to a... We re replaced him with a core rather than army, but the core does have infantry weapons level one. And then we reinforce the armies at Cheng Chao and then also the unit that we just pulled back that spends all the Chinese money. We'll go ahead and swap that core out for one with better weapons. And we'll have to just hope that that's enough to hold out against the Japanese here. Okay, so that probably about does it for the Chinese, I think. These guys are already working on the fortifications. Still have a few units that are kind of hanging back here. All right. So another Japanese unit destroyed near in the south near Canton, as well as another Japanese unit, a core near Pakoi, damaged pretty badly. Um, for the Soviets, do we want to purchase anything? Can we purchase anything? We can afford a core. So I guess we'll do that. I would have preferred to spend more money on their actual research and development. Speaking of which, where is the Soviet unit research? So they're closing in on infantry weapons level 1. They're investing 1,100. They can invest up to 2,000. The British are investing 1,100 up to 2,000. Americans are investing near their max. The, the one country I feel like I'm doing a good job of spending my, uh, my resources is probably America because I don't have to worry about building any troops right now. We should probably invest another 100 in amphibious warfare stuff. So that brings us up to 2,500 research. From what I've heard, spying and intelligence is a good thing to be investing in. So the Soviets are investing a little bit in that. The Chinese would probably be well suited to do that as well, but we don't have the money for them. And, uh, I guess we can invest a little bit in infantry warfare for the Indians, Indian soldiers. Although India's not even at war yet, because I made that stupid mistake. I don't even know if we look at the diplomacy, is anyone even close to joining? India's only 25% of the way, Bulgaria's, I thought they already declared... No one else is all that close. 
So that's lovely. Well, we'll have to see what happens as we play through this turn. Uh, the weather's going to prevent us from doing any bombing or recon, really, of the, of the Germans. I guess we could try and scout out. Well, we already saw. We already scouted that area, didn't we? So we can do some recon over here. Hey, we detected an enemy sub. Can't hit it, though. It's too far away. Coastal Command might be able to. And I already spent my money on my destroyers this turn by sending them out to uh, repair. I guess I could send this one destroyer here. All right, so the sub dives from attack, and then we'll pull our sub, our, our submarine, or our destroyer back. Hopefully the Germans don't rush out toward Dodger Bank, but if they do, we've got quite a large naval force that we can respond to them with. And uh, I think that's going to do it for this turn. Still got a little bit of time, so let's let's run through this turn as well. So we'll do two turns here. We'll move into January of 1940. Uh, Italian morale suffers from the loss of Tobruk. Italian morale suffers from the loss of Addis Abba. Allies liberate Abyssinia. The first of our fortification lines in Russia is completed. Suez Canal is limiting Italian supply in Abyssinia. USA is doing some good technology work. USSR is developing production, aircraft, industrial technology, artillery for India. Okay. I need more money for the USSR. I need them to start mobilizing. Shouldn't they start mobilizing as the Germans get closer and closer to going to war? That's how it works for the uh, AI anyway. Okay. Japanese carriers are bombing Changchow and our troops there. Some troop movements going on in China as well. You know, all the resources the Italians want to invest in, in East Africa and reinforcements that could be going toward building new units and home waters, I am 100% okay with that. I need some anti-aircraft guns in China to give their Air Force a little bit of a bloody nose. Wow, they nearly routed that uh, infantry corps. Hopefully they don't bring any additional troops in to finish it off. Our troops have not done a very good job this turn of getting any return shots in. More and more shifting of troops along the Russian border. Don't worry, Stalin, that's not ominous at all. Just taking a pause here to sip a fine Oktoberfest beer that I'm drinking. The Africa Corps deploys for service in the Mediterranean. I think they arrive in Tripoli? Oh no, maybe not. There's the uh, reconnaissance unit for the Africa Corps. I think they get a panzer, a reconnaissance, and artillery... And infantry. <clears throat> Which will probably outclass me. They also get a, a fighter unit and a bomber unit. Meanwhile, the King George V battleship is arriving. So. Invade this, bitches. Alright. So. Let's see here. So we're going to have to see, we're going to have to fall this recon unit back, because I don't have any supplies. I'm going to pull this special forces unit and my fighter unit back a little bit. I really want to reinforce this guy, but I can't. Alright, this is going to hurt their morale, but I'm going to sprint these troops up this way. Actually. Why can't I bring these guys ashore? What the hell? Apparently they can't come ashore there. But they can come ashore in Alexandria, so we'll do that. 
Uh, battleships moving here. Enemy subs. We'll try and engage them with our destroyers. But of course, the ever-present die from attack. At least in that case, uh, they didn't get away unscathed. We can use our carriers against them. Actually, the fact that I reinforced North Africa with my carriers should prove pretty useful um, because now I will be able to use those carriers against the Africa Corps. Oh, what am I doing? Don't be stupid. Gonna get my carrier sunk. Didn't I have one more carrier or was it just the two? I think it was just the two, I guess. All right, these guys can reinforce one more level. These guys already attacked. I'm just going to move the Greek destroyer over there in the hope that it distracts them enough to be like, hey, maybe we should go after these guys. Meanwhile, we're going to pull this Greek army back. And so we're going to cram in here on the southern tip of Greece. I need more freaking supply. I need What I need is I need Tobruk to repair enough so that it, it gets its supply level up high enough so that it can act as a basis of supply or something. All right. Meanwhile, moving back to East Africa, let's destroy this headquarter unit. There we go. Oh, almost. All right, there we go. So we destroyed the Italian headquarters unit here in Eastern Africa. We will not be able to pull back this garrison unit, so we actually will swap it out with that unit. Move our headquarters unit south to support. We'll move the other garrison unit back to make sure we keep East Africa garrisoned. Keep moving that unit forward here. And now we've got three corps, or two corps and an army and a garrison against a single Italian corps with zero supply. Should make quick work of it and then move on Mogadishu. That should be the objective there. Meanwhile, if we move back to South Africa, it doesn't look like I can reinforce my units there. Can we upgrade them? We can. So we get them to infantry weapons, one, spend a little bit of money upgrading them. Meanwhile, let's not forget about those Canadians. The Canadian uh, troop transport convoy was not forgot or was not uh, detected, apparently, by the Germans. So we're going to sail it into Plymouth. We're going to put those Canadians ashore, and they will aid in the defense of the Empire. All right, there you go. Meanwhile... It's snowing in England, so I can't really do anything with my Air Force or anything like that. We are going to move this destroyer south to keep an eye on the Germans. We don't appear to be doing anything down here. We'll move this other destroyer toward the Hague. Take a look at Amsterdam. Again, no enemy troop transports there. This cruiser will check on Cherbourg and Le Havre. Still nothing there. The La Trumpf, I actually want... Oh, I can't reinforce it, so I guess we'll send her to Brest. And pull her back. Nothing there. So overall, not a lot going on on the coast of Europe. Um, can we reinforce this guy? We can. We can at least reinforce the artillery in North Africa, which will be useful. Although right now it's too far in the rear. to be closer. I'm not sure it's a good idea supply-wise to move them the way I just did. But I did. All right. Still have 197 income left for the British. Maybe we will spend it on some R&D. We're going to upgrade this Chinese unit's weapons. Alright, so these fortifications were completed. That's a weird... Why did I do it that way? Can I add more fortifications? I can't, it's already fortified. 
shit. Well, that was a weird... Well, that was a weird way. It's going to leave this whole line's flank exposed. Lovely. Right, reinforce these guys. They suffered some casualties. These guys suffered some massive casualties. But I'd rather reinforce this army to near full strength. Cheng Chao. This core is going to get destroyed next turn. But I'm okay with that. It doesn't really expose our line at all. We can really fall back out of this position one hex back without any real ill effects, I think. Okay. Nice. Continuing the attacks at Pakoi. Japanese moved another unit into Canton. We're surprisingly pretty effective against them, but they basically have no supply. It would be real great to destroy the Japanese at Canton on Pakhoi over time, not just destroying two armies and a core, but also securing our flank and then allowing us perhaps to turn on the Japanese elsewhere. Meanwhile, the British in North Africa... Or sorry, in Malaya. I guess we can spend some of our money upgrading these troops here to hopefully give a better account of themselves when the war against the Japanese does start. And that's really my focus at the moment. I may also send some of these guys on troop transports to get the heck out of there. Because I'd hate to wait, waste three potentially good cores of troops. Especially now that I've invested so heavily in them. Um, meanwhile... These guys need to move. Set to fortify, rotate. And again, so what we'll do is we're going to have an unbroken line of fortifications from Riga toward Dag of Pils. And then um, maybe as far down to Potosk. We may do that. But this is the closest spot in our line that will be close to the, to the Germans. So if we can fortify that line to ensure that they run into a little bit of an obstacle on their way, um, then all the better. The other guys are behind a river. These guys are behind a river too, which but again I don't I don't know if that matters. Um, America has a fair bit of money. They also just finished up some research. So what do we want to research on? Promise I don't I don't know what strategy I want to follow as the United States. I mean, I do want to. I do need to invest in naval weaponry. There's no doubt about that. So we'll do that. And I think that'll probably about do it for this turn. So um, we did two turns. We're into 1941. Come the spring, the Germans may assault the Russians, or we may get the historical invasion of Yugoslavia. The Greece continue. The Greece. The Greece. The Greeks continue to hold out. The Africa Corps has arrived in Africa, but we haven't felt its effects yet. We've taken Tobruk, and we're trying to consolidate our position around that. We have taken East Africa uh, from the Italians. Specifically, we've taken Abyssinia. We need to mo do a little bit more work to take out Mogadishu uh, in that uh, East African coast. Uh, and then um, in China, the situation there is still pretty stagnant. The Japanese are starting to get the upper hand just to the east of Changchao, uh, where we'll probably lose a core next turn. But the hope is that their focus on destroying this core for a couple of attacks should buy the other units time. And we've also started reinforcing some big units like the 12th Army in Changchao as well. That's the situation right now in January of 1941. We'll see thing how things play out next time on our next episode. But until then, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you for watching this episode of Strategic Command World War II World at War. And until next time, I'm out.